Hey, six now, the Israeli elections. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is in the political fight for his life as parliamentary elections loom early next week. Hamas would like to control the territory, but doesn't use its authority. And I demand this from them. If they do not do this, it appears there will be no choice but to embark on a mass campaign in Gaza and change things. Tuesday's election will show whether this is the final act of an eventful political career. Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Nussbaum. Barry, I've read the charges. Uh, things like uh, getting a cigar uh, as a gift. Uh, this is a, a, a bribe. This is a joke. Israeli politics is literally hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's like the UFC, but they wear suits most of the time. This is how they do things, and they get very aggressive. There's already been one prime minister that's gone to jail. There are mayors that have gone to jail. There have been indictments for decades. The Israeli courts are very aggressive. And you're right, Graham, it's much ado about nothing. The big test for Bibi is Tuesday right. to see if his reign will continue. And there's another phony scandal that's floating around Washington, D.C. right now. And when I first saw this in the headlines, I said to myself, this doesn't make any sense. The accusation that Israel, uh, through Benjamin Netanyahu, obviously he would know about something like this, is spying on President Trump, spying on the White House. Well, here's the prime minister and his flat out reply to all that. Roll tape. I have a direct no intelligence collection in the United States, no spying, and it's rigorously enforced without any exception. Why would? You have to ask yourself, why would wonderful allies and two leaders, by the way, who get along so beautifully, why would Netanyahu try and jeopardize that with some sort of silly move like this? I smell a rat here, Barry. I believe this is planted to try and drive a wedge between Israel, United States, Netanyahu and Trump. It's no different, Graham, uh, than the Obama administration spending American money trying to defeat Bibi when Obama was still president of the United States and Obama failed at it. This story comes from one source, Politico. It's been denied everywhere else by the White House, by Bibi, and by uh, Israeli uh, intelligence. It's insane and incomprehensible that the best friend Israel has ever had, who now sits in the White House, who is also, in addition to policy, a close friend of the prime minister's, would be spied upon as if he couldn't be trusted. It's absurd. Israel has denied it. The White House has denied it. And I would dismiss it. I think it's dirty tricks at the last minute to make him look bad to the Israeli public for the Tuesday vote for prime minister. Speaking of not being able to trust, uh, Iran, there is word this week uh, through Israel that Iran destroyed a, a site that was uh, testing nuclear weapons, that was developing uh, nuclear weapons, and then wiped it off the map to try and get rid of it. Of course, you know, there's intelligence photos before and after. You can kind of see that something went on. And why would you suddenly wipe all these buildings off the map, Iran? Well, obviously, they're trying to hide something. But Barry, the big picture here, this is a violation. If you believe in the JCPOA, <laughs> clearly this is a violation of the JCPOA. Graham, I was campaigning against the JCPOA when it was first talked about, and I've been campaigning against it ever since. It's the most diabolical abandonment of U.S. security interests abroad, maybe in American history, and certainly betrayed Israel. Netanyahu, for years, has been proclaiming to everyone and anyone who would listen, Iran took Obama's billions, 150 of them, and is spending it on weapons development, missile development, nuclear enhancement, and exporting terror around the world. And what does the world do, Graham? Absolutely nothing, with the exception of the current occupant of the White House. The rest of the world says, well, look, they're not going to bomb us. They're not going to commit terror against us. And they have a lot of oil that we'd really like to trade with. And they have a lot of companies that we'd really like to invest in. So we're gonna turn a blind eye and ignore all the evidence. And that's exactly what Europe has done. That's exactly what the United Nations has done. And every country in the world, with the exception of Israel, calling them for what they're doing, and the United States, uh, thank goodness, standing up with Israel against Iran, it's two against everybody else. Maybe now, finally, the world will start to pay attention before 
they weaponize uranium. And then, oh my gosh, are we all collectively in big trouble. I hope you're right, Barry, because it's very short-sighted by these European countries who, as you mentioned, want to you know, uh, buy their oil or, or do trade with Iran. Very short-sighted because, in the end, Iran's going to aim ICBMs at those same countries. Don't they connect the dots here? And the bottom line is the reminder, <laughs> should be a reminder to our State Department, that you can't negotiate with Iran because, as Ronald Reagan said, you cannot negotiate with terrorists, and that's what they are. Very thanks.